everyone, welcome to Jason Explains Things. I'm back with Sarge, my third gen Toyota Tacoma TRD Off-Road. Now my truck has entered phase two of my truck build. We just recently installed the GMRS radio and now it's time to cover all of this awesomeness. You see right here, this stuff. This video is gonna cover everything you're gonna to need to know to install the aluminum CBI Off-Road Classic front bumper, a worn VR10S winch along with wiring and relocating the control box, and a Cali raised LED light bar, including wiring and OEM looking switch. Now, this video is gonna be a little bit more of a detailed step-by-step -step video because I've looked on YouTube and currently there is not a comprehensive video about this specific bumper and these components. A warning for you guys, while doing this install, I did come across some serious issues with this combination of parts, specifically the winch and the bumper, but you're also gonna get some clever solutions, if I do say so myself. My friends, if you find this video helpful and or entertaining, hopefully both, please drop a like, subscribe, and use my links in the description for all the parts that you're gonna see. There's even a couple of discount codes for you. That's how you tell Jason thanks. <laughs> all right, well, let's get to the job. All right, guys, we are in the shop. We're gonna get started on the smorgasbord <laughs> for the front end of the Tacoma. Uh, Dad, how cold is it outside? It's about 10 degrees. We're, we're, ha we're happy to be in here in a, in a shop with- Nice uh, and warm. With like two heaters going. Let's quickly go over a couple more parts used in this build. I opted to use these painted bumper caps from Running for Tacos. Using these means you don't need to cut your bumper cover so that you can either keep it or sell it and recoup some of the cost. Honestly though, at $350 for painted ones, I just cut my bumper. That's my only regret for this job and I'll link to a video on how to do that cut in the description. The bumper came with brackets to mount my fog lights and I opted for the optional side brackets for added strength. For the winch, I added CBI's aluminum fair lead and a closely matching Factor 55 flat link hook. Well, that's it for parts, guys. Check the description again for links to all those things. None of this stuff was sponsored. I did get discounts on some of these things, but most of it I didn't. So I really appreciate you guys watching. In the description, you're gonna find links to other helpful things like we've got CBI's PDF for their instructions and then older version of this exact PDF, but it actually goes into more detail than this newer one. So you're gonna get both of them. I'm super helpful. Let's tear this thing apart. To start the disassembly portion, we're gonna take our front grill off. We've got two 10 millimeters at the top and a couple uh, little, little guys we have to pop out. We also have to disconnect our uh, radar wiring and also I've installed a front camera as well. If you want a video about that, link somewhere. So I put uh, the disconnect for the front camera right in the little crevice right there. I forgot one little clip to get. There we go. And free. It's a safe spot for it. To take off the bumper cover, we're gonna start on the sides, uh, disconnect the fender flares. We only need to get the fender flare out, probably about to here, just so we can take our cover off and then trim it. it we got all the screws out, but there are a couple little poppers. So you're gonna want to separate your wheel well liner a little bit, and we'll kind of show you, but you just have to squeeze these little tabs together. First one's right here. Just squeezing that. Kind of hurts your hands. It's fine though. There we go. And we got one more and this one actually does just pop out like that. Ah. All right, we get to go to the store for one of these. Hopefully they're available. We'll get that at lunch. But well, let's keep tearing this apart. We've got four of these across here and then and you got one of these on each side. Last fasteners we gotta remove are these two 10 millimeters on the bottom. All right, with that out of the way, we're ready to take off the cover. You do need to, we don't need to unmount, but we do need to unplug the wiring harness for our fog lights. Whoa, there she goes. Oh, you know what, there is a... Oh, that sucks. It's supposed to just pop off. <laughs> it popped out fine on this side, but it didn't on that side. Ah, it stinks. All right, friends, here's something to look out for. So your bumper cover up on this side, on both sides, is just uh, kind of wedged in, kind of popped in. And on this side, the, the bracket held just fine. But unfortunately, on the driver's side, that bracket that was kind of mounted here that it popped into did not let go and actually snapped. So turns out this piece isn't easy to get or cheap. So we repaired it with epoxy and hot glue. Good as new, pretty much. We also were able to find an aftermarket version of that fender clip that I broke. 
Time to remove our crash bar right here. We just have three 14 millimeter uh, nuts on both sides. Next, remove the large factory tow hook. No worries, your new bumper includes two rated recovery points. Also remove these extensions on each side. If you have the factory skid plate, you'll need to remove it during the installation. But if you're rocking CBI skid, it won't interfere with the installation. Link to my skid plate video in the card above and in the description below. <laughs> on this job, we don't have to do a lot of cutting, but we need to do a tiny bit. We actually, on both sides, mind you, we have to cut this little uh, piece that kind of bends out so that the new bumper can kind of come in and sit nice and flush. Quick of that. Uh, last thing we gotta do is we have to trim the air dams on both sides. Really, really simple cut. Like this on the driver's side and this on the passenger side. Before fitting the new bumper, we need to relocate the power steering cooler. Remove the two 12 millimeter bolts that hold it in place and the 12 millimeter bracket bolt holding the line back here on the passenger side. Use CBI supplied relocation brackets and hardware to secure the cooler closer to the radiator. One quick note, be careful that this isn't like metal isn't hitting metal. Like I don't want to put it all the way back there, just a little bit right there. So we give everything a little bit of wiggle room. Done. I then installed the new bumper end caps using the OEM hardware. After that, I used masking tape to mark where to cut my fender flares. Cut them with my air saw, and then gave them a quick sanding to make the edge nice and smooth. If you want to relocate your winch controller, it's time to secure the bracket. This tandem off-road bracket uses existing mounting points on the top. I just needed to mark, drill, and install one riv nut on the bottom. Honestly, this install turns out incredibly clean and doesn't even need any wiring extensions with the worn winch I'm using. Time to mount the lighting and winch into the bumper. I started with the fog lights, mounting them in place using CBI supplied brackets. One small issue, I needed to trim off part of the plastic bracket to make the fog lights fit as snug as possible. I then mounted the Cali Ray's 20 inch light bar. First, I installed the supplied brackets from CBI and then the light. The light bar body itself was a little short, so I had to use some zinc spacers and extra long bolts to secure it. From the outside though, it fits just fine. I prepped the winch by removing the control box from the body. To do this, I had to use an Allen wrench to remove the center bracket, disconnect the box from the bracket, and then reinstall the bracket. Mount the winch into the bumper with Warren supplied hardware. You'll need to do the back bolts first, and then we'll do the front two when the bumper is on the truck. Install the positive and negative wires to the back of the winch now, while it's still easy to do so. Using the buddy system, we got the bumper on the truck, loosely securing it with the OEM 14 millimeter nuts. Next, we removed the front winch plate cover from the bumper and then secured the two front winch bolts. Now torque all four to 35 foot pounds. And this is when I discovered a potentially serious problem. We had to do a little bit of unexpected clearancing because I, as soon as we put this in and put everything together, I noticed that our synthetic rope was touching uh, kind of like two layers back of the aluminum metal inside the bumper. It's nothing to do with how we set it up. There's not really any adjustability as far as where the winch sits. So what we did is broke out every grinding tool I had, <laughs> including, including a good old fashioned file and got it to uh, not be nearly as sharp. I still think that this, this is something I'm gonna keep my eye on, frankly, uh, once I'm doing a lot of off-roading and using of this winch because I, I don't want to preemptively you know, age this line because these are not cheap. Obviously, the uh, biggest thing is we wouldn't want it to snap while in use, right? So if the whole um, fairly could go up a little bit, that would negate the issue, but we have this bolt here. So I think we did the best we could. Next, we mounted the winch control box to the bracket and then routed all our wiring, securing all wiring in flex tubing with zip ties. The positive and negative leads from the winch go directly to the battery in corresponding positive and negative. Don't reverse that, that'd be bad. <laughs> wiring up the Cali Raised light bar and OEM style switch from Cali Raised is very easy. For a detailed breakdown, check out this Forerunner video. 
The process is exactly the same, including how to connect the switch wiring harness to the light bars wiring harness. We've got our bumper loosely mounted, we've got all our wiring done, and I went ahead and put the grill back on because now it's time to essentially finalize our fitment and get our side brackets on and then we're 100% done. Here's how to adjust the bumper alignment so that your gaps are even on each side. On the frame where those extensions used to be, you must secure a bolt, spacer washers, and a lock nut. The number of spacer washers you have on each side is how you adjust your alignment. Guys, Editor Jason here. I have a little bit of an addendum to this project. So, as you saw, I went back and forth uh, many times on the day and then later uh, adjusting the height with those washers from the bottom um, to try to make the gap nice and even. Uh, out of a quarter inch gap on both sides. Well, again, because I have these, these kind of, as you can see, kind of vibrate a little bit. And because they vibrate, um, it can start to scratch your brand new fancy pants bumper, which is not cool. So long story short, um, you know, it's totally okay to have to loosen things a little bit and adjust your gaps, um, which I did at least twice. And then also, uh, only about a month ago, I installed this uh, rubber edge banding. Um, it also protects the, the power coat from getting scratched up. And then also just by the nature of, you know, being able to kind of maybe push this down a little bit than it actually is, I'm actually able to make it look very, very nice and even. I recommend it. I'm gonna run it this way from now on. Tighten the bottom bolt down when you're happy with your alignment and then tighten the six original 14 millimeter nuts that connected the bumper to the truck. Torque specs weren't included in my instructions and were hard to find, but another manufacturer said 30 foot pounds, so I did that. If that's right or wrong, please leave a comment below. Installing the side brackets is a cakewalk. Remove this plastic frame cap on each side. Remove the two 12 millimeter sway bar bracket bolts. Slide the side bracket into place and secure with the supplied hardware. One special note, the large grade eight bolt that goes through the frame uses this large square washer and then a lock nut. I also used Loctite on all these fasteners. Reinstall your sway bar bracket bolts on each side and torque to 30 foot pounds. Last note on the install, you'll need to cut your wheel well liners. I unfortunately lost the footage of doing this, so here's a quick look from CBI doing that on a different bumper. Phase two of my Tacoma build has one more giant project that you guys can look forward to, and that is a full suspension upgrade and lift. Adding all of that weight to the front of your truck will cause uh, a noticeable droop. Uh, I would estimate probably a half an inch to three quarters of an inch. So hit that subscribe button and turn on notifications for that video along with other ones. Actually, another one that popped up while doing this job was because I had to cut those wheel well liners so much, I am getting all sorts of mud caked inside of my bumper on the back of the lights and everything. So we're gonna have a pretty clever fix for that as well that you can look forward to. So everybody, until next time, God bless. Don't forget to do it yourself. And I really hope I make it out of here okay. <laughs> It'll be fine. <laughs>